Will you please give a warm welcome for Lindsay Tepkema? It was New Year's Eve, and I did something that I've never done before. I embraced a mantra, you know, a word or a phrase that's meant to just kind of ground you throughout the year. And then I wrote it on a chalkboard, because that seemed what would make sense. And <laughs> I, I, I put that chalkboard on my wall, and it served as that mantra for that year. And you see, I'd never done that before because I just never really had a word or a phrase that would stick out to me like this um, that I wanted to hold on to for a year. But this one, this boldly be yourself, that came to me unsolicited. And I wish that I could tell you that it was the result of some Marie kondo experience or some, some creative endeavor, but it didn't. It came out of a lot of pain. Out of, a year, out of years, out of a lifetime of listening to people tell me that I wasn't who they thought I should be. When I was a little girl, my mom would tell you about how anytime we had visitors over, I would run upstairs and I would put on dress up clothes and I would get all ready to go and then I would shout down, Mom, Dad, I'm ready! So that they could obviously, come gather around and watch me, I'm not kidding, sashay down the stairs in all of my glory, firmly in the spotlight of my own show. I mean, talk about standing tall in your story, right? I was so confident as that little girl. But over time, over, over those years, uh, that little girl was told to come off the stage. And when I think about that, <laughs> oh, because when I was in school, I was smart and I was outgoing and I loved learning. And that was misinterpreted, that was twisted around as too ambitious, too eager, right? And I was told to step back out of the spotlight lest I get too much attention. But then I got into theater. And um, I became a pretty serious singer, voice lessons and all. And then I went to audition for our most elite program that we had in our school. And I didn't make it. But when I talked to the director about it, she told me, yeah, I, th I think you probably had the talent, but I don't know, there was just something, something about you that's just it's too much. I know. So my 17-year-old self, turned down the volume on who I was, um, stepped back from ambitions of being the star, and took on much more of what I was supposed to do in her eyes as being a more supporting actress role. And then I made it into that group. So lesson learned, note taken, be more likable. And then uh, one of my first jobs after school, after college, I worked for a boss that was one of those early is on time, on time is late, late is unacceptable. One of those types that set a really high bar. And for this overachiever, I rose to that challenge. And so uh, he didn't really like me at first because I was too young, I was too kind, I was too nice. And so I, I went out there and worked to win him over by overworking, by striving, by grinding, by doing whatever it took to get on his radar and to win him over. And it worked. So again, note taken. So in the years that followed, I did everything that it took to just work hard to get ahead, and it worked. My career started to take off, and it was all built on a foundation of striving and grinding and overworking and just putting in every hour of every day until I ran headfirst into being a young mom and working for a company where I felt like I really had to prove myself because you know, your whole life changes when you have a baby. And so I had to prove that I was still that hardworking, ambitious professional, which is why it cut me to the core when the leader of that company that I was working for told me that I was cold, abrasive, inflexible, and overly assertive, which really, really cut me, not only because I was vulnerable at that time, but because I had come to know her, fellow mom, as a friend. So again, note taken, I softened, and I, I sought out to become more of who she wanted me to be. 
And then, uh, years later, as I was negotiating the details of a, a job, another job, um, the CEO of that company told me that he really liked me and he, that I, he was sure I was talented. And hey, he had three daughters of his own, so he was really all about women in the workplace. But he just, I quote, couldn't justify giving some cute girl that kind of salary. Yeah. The same, to make it worse, the same exact salary that I knew for a fact my male counterpart was making. So now apparently I was too female. Over the years, I had been told that I was too tall, too small, too loud, too quiet, too much, not enough, too, too young, too everything, too much of a mom at work. And because of work, not enough of a mom outside of it. I was too everything and not enough of anything. And I was putting my value in what other people thought I should be. And that was exhausting. And so I thought about all that I had done, all that I had accomplished, an increasingly more successful career, three kids, including, as she mentioned, twins, because I made three humans, two of which were at the same time, y'all. And I thought, you know what? The common thread here is me. So why am I putting so much stake in what other people are saying? <sighs> so I returned to work um, after that holiday break with this boldly be myself mantra. And I set out to do what one does after holiday break. And I put together the marketing plan for our company. And I thought, you know what? Of my 15 years of experience in marketing, we need a podcast. This company needs a podcast. It'll be good for our brand. And I faced some pushback. You know, why, why would we do this? Why would we not go with the status quo? What we're doing is working. But I said, nope, we're doing it. I'm using my budget. We're, we're pushing for it. I did a podcast. And over the next 12 months, I got to be the host of that podcast. And I literally and figuratively found my voice. That podcast led to me leaving that really great job as a VP at a global SaaS company to start a company of my own. And so I stand here today as the CEO and co-founder of my own company, Casted, which is the first and only marketing platform built around podcasts. <laughs> right? <laughs> and get this, exactly one month ago, today, I stood on a different stage and I launched that company out into the world surrounded by people who showed up for me, the real me, including this incredible group of Rise and Thrive women, all because I stepped out to boldly be myself. And I think about, what if I hadn't, right? I think about that little girl in dress-up clothes on a stage of her own who was told to step back out of that spotlight. And although it took some time, that little girl's grown up now, standing here today in dress-up clothes, <laughs> on a stage, <laughs> in a spotlight. <laughs> Standing tall in her story as a badass woman who is boldly being herself. <laughs>